Hi there. I wanted some bases for my Imperial Navy breaches that both fitted the theme of the kill team and also reflected the environment that they typically find themselves in. So I put together these Space Hulk themed ones, which could also pass as generic sci-fi bases. Today, I'm going to show you how I went about making and painting these bases and also give a few little hints and tips that you can include to hopefully make your bases look that little bit more authentic. If, when watching this video, you feel like I deserve a like or a subscription or a ring of a bell, that option's always open to you. But I'll leave time codes down in the description for if you want to jump around to a particular section. But let's get started. If you have already watched my video on making plastic card bases, most of this first part will be pretty familiar. The main difference in my approach this time is that I used a compass cutter to cut the base toppers to the exact size I needed. My main reason for this was I wanted to keep the rim looking as smooth as possible to really make every part look precise and uniform. I'm using a one millimeter thick sheet in this video, but I've used this cutter on much thicker sheets without issue. Feel free to use whatever you have to hand. However, getting the exact size circle I needed took a little trial and error. I adjusted my compass cutter to half of the official size of the base and took off a couple of millimeters. With a little fine tuning, I ended up with perfect size toppers in just a few tries. I'm doing bases for all of my team at once, so the few failed attempts were definitely worth it in the long run. With all of my plastic card circles cut, I'm happy with how smooth they are looking. The only real downside is the unsightly dot in the center of all of them. To minimize this, I shave down any displaced plastic card and leave the holes as a problem for a future rookie to deal with. On my Blackstone Fortress bases, I cut the plastic card and glued the pieces down a small distance apart. But this time, I planned what I wanted each base to look like and drew any breaks in with a ruler and pencil. Another good thing about this method is you can pretty precisely cut gaps for extra bits to add a little variety. The zip tie makes a nice drain and I also cut a larger channel to pop a small length of styrene tube into another base. Having these items recessed like this should make them look a lot more like they are genuinely part of the ship. I then cut and removed any unneeded strips of card from my circles and stuck them to the base, piece by piece with plastic glue. I probably should have cut these lines with a ruler and not trusted myself so much, but they turned out okay. I just trimmed anything that didn't look right and the imperfections are barely noticeable on them now. The mostly straight lines and right angles should read as metal plating when finished. With all the plastic card down, I glued any additional bits I wanted on too and trimmed them so that they were pretty flush with the edge of the base. Whilst the bases with these more interesting features look great, I am concerned that the planar ones aren't quite there yet. To remedy this, I used a little metal spike from my toolbox to pierce holes along the edge of a few card pieces. The idea being, they will hopefully look like small rivets that have been punched into the floor panels to hold them down. If you don't have something similar to hand, you could use the end of a sculpting tool, or perhaps even a thin drill piece of your hand drill. Speaking of which, I used my hand drill here to make larger holes in the card bases that had awkward looking corners. The card puts up much less resistance than in the actual base, so I didn't drill into my hand even once, honestly. Just be careful and go slowly. Again, my hope is that these will look like holes where the bolts are holding down the plating once painted. Now, those holes in the bases. I tried filling them by smushing in some milliput, adding a dab of sprue glue, or even some plastic glue. My hope was that after a little sanding, they would not be noticeable. None of them worked perfectly, but if I had to give an arbitrary award to one method, I'd say the plastic glue was the bestest. I could have experimented further, but there is only a certain amount of obsessing over bases that I'm willing to allow myself to do. Now they are done, none of them are noticeable, and this will be even more true once a miniature is attached. For more variety, I put a little texture paste on some bases and stuck down a skull on one base too. I jabbed a few small patches of typhus corrosion on in the hope that some subtle texture will add variety when painted. Just use your imagination and the contents of your bits box and I'm sure you'll come up with something good. With my bases prepared, it's time to get painting. I primed with some Chaos Black Spray, then added a thin layer of Abaddon Black to ensure a solid even coat of paint over the entire surface. To add as much texture to the metal as possible, I opted to dry brush them pretty heavily with Vallejo Metal Color Gunmetal Grey. I used a small makeup brush and brushed from a variety of directions, creating lots of soft micro scratches over the surface. I then went back with a dry brush with rougher bristles and Vallejo Metal Color Duraluminium. 
I went lighter this time and tried to hit edges and raise detail. This brush leaves more distinct scratch looking lines and the lighter colour should suggest that they are fresher. Finally, I took Vallejo Metal Colour Chrome and a fine brush and painted in some finer details. I picked out edges, corners and points, reinforcing my selective dry brush with rougher edge highlights and adding a few dings and scratches too. I used Vallejo Metal Colour because they are my favourites, but you could use whatever dark, mid and light metal colours you have to hand. The common Citadel equivalents would probably be Lead Belcher, Iron Breaker and Stormhost Silver. And that is the metal done. However, silver is metallic grey and grey is boring, so let's add in some colour and variety. I started by re-establishing darkness in the recesses between the metal plating. Some of my aggressive dry brushing has snuck in there too. I used Rattling Grime to make it look dirty and Abaddon Black where it needed darkening even more. We want to give the illusion of depth, so a dark colour is very important. I painted up the skull and the detritus, plus applied a couple of decals that I thought worked thematically. These came from the Admec transfer sheet, if you're interested. Now, this metal looks a little too factory fresh for me, so I decided to do some simple weathering. I began by ripping off a small bit of sponge and dipping the corner in some Rhinox hide, using tweezers. Once the excess has been wiped off on some tissue, it can be dabbed to give patches of dots and texture. I would recommend sticking to open areas, edges, and raised details, as these would be more likely to get scuffed and rust. To make the finish of the metal look less clean, I decided to tint it with some washers. I took the holy trinity of Seraphin Sepia, Nolan Oil, and Agrax Earthshade, then thinned them with some contrast medium in a well palette. I chose contrast medium specifically because it dries with more of a sheen and didn't want to dull the metal too much. I then applied these washers in patches to every surface on the top of the base. I tried to turn off my brain and just do what felt right, but as a general rule, the two browns went towards recesses and over details. I used the black only in more open spaces. I made sure the patches of wash always met so they could mingle as they dried and worked fast to maximize this. I went back for a quick second pass once it was dry too, just to accentuate the effect in a few key places. With the washes done, I stippled some pretty thin scrag brown with a fine brush within those patches of Rhinox hide, in an attempt to make the rust look more textured. I repeated this with more occasional dots of Troll Slayer Orange for even more variety. These watered down browns are also a great way of getting quick and easy rust in recesses and around details too. In all honesty, I probably went a little bright too quickly, so Mournfang Brown and Scrag Brown could have been better choices. Now that the weathering is done, we've lost a fair bit of shine on those metal highlights. I wanted to add a few dots of more intense brightness in places, so I went back in with my Dura Aluminium and picked out a few bits. Try to stick to places that have been highlighted previously to make it look like areas where rust and grime have been rubbed off from people passing through the environment and catching corners and details. Dots around patches of rust should give the impression of flaking metal. Plus scratches in boring areas should help add visual interest. Just make the brush stroke small and precise, work quickly and try not to overthink things. With the base rims painted with a nice crisp black rim, I think these spaceship bases are looking more than passable. But to add a little narrative and additional bonus color, I decided to invest some time in adding some standout features to a few select bases. Many of these involve specialist paints with their own finish, so I decided to apply some satin varnish first to protect the majority of the base. A small patch of Nurgle's Rot adds a nice splash of color to this base. Plus, when the mini is attached with a matching glob, you can really tie the mini to the environment by stringing some Uhu glue between its foot and the puddle. With a little blood for the blood god on a brush, I was able to create some pretty nice blood splatter on this base. I blasted it with an air duster in quick bursts to make it look more natural. I varied the distance and intensity for extra variety. For this bloody handprint, I just looked up an example on Google Image Search and tried to replicate it, keeping scale in mind. To match it as closely to the image as I could, I did this with small blobs and carefully dragged a few smears with very little on my brush. I always recommend using an old or cheap brush when using this paint as it's not particularly kind to the bristles. I thought having some water running in recesses might look nice, potentially from burst pipe or leaking tank someplace in the ship. I jabbed a little pigment in there first and then carefully let some clear UV resin drip into the recess. This stuff was thin enough to run itself along the line well, 
but had enough surface tension to not run over the edges, thankfully. Most of the colour from the pigment is lost once the resin hits it. But it must be in there somewhere, right? I wasn't completely happy with the rust I painted earlier, so I stippled a little dirty down rust over it to knock it back and to make it look a little more realistic. If you're intrigued by this product at all, I have a pretty lengthy video when I take a look at lots of potential different uses for the paint. You may find it handy for basing or scenery. And that's it. My bases are done and I'm very happy with them. I only have a few of my Voidsman at Arms painted at the moment, but I'm counting them as a success so far. I like how the regal colours of these lads contrasts with the drab environment of my Space Hulk. Thanks for watching this far. What else do you think could be added to bases like this? Do you have any additional ideas? If you wanted to pick up any of the products mentioned in this video, there's an Amazon referral link below. If you click on that, go in there. You can also find a couple of other lists of recommended products from me. Starting your next hobby shopping spree there doesn't cost you an extra penny, but it really helps me out. If you wanted to support the making of more videos like this, you can also find a link to my Patreon down below. There are a few different tiers listed that range from just fueling my biscuit eating habit to acting as a producer for future videos where you can get exactly what you want made. Additionally, you can get feedback on your miniatures from me directly, and there's also an option for coaching, so check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, enjoy your hobby, and I'll see you next time. Take care.